Okay, let's actually do it this time. You know, thinking about it now, it's been a while since I've been really harsh on things. I know people call me a negative critic and that kind of was true, mainly in my hot-headed years, but I think I've mellowed out, especially after Supernatural ended, but this year, the bad movies stand out to me more than the good ones, and that shouldn't be. So I actually wasn't going to do this video because I try to stay out of that negativity now, but it needs to be said how bad some of the movies were this year. Just as an offhanded one, Dash Cam, that movie came out, and oh my god. Award winner for the most irritating main character of all time. Y'all can have whatever kind of opinions and thoughts you had during the COVID, but the ones that I just couldn't stand where the people who just made wearing a mask inside a restaurant like it was their fucking rights and livelihood being taken away. There's women in Iran dying right now. There's people dying in Iran right now just fighting for normal women's rights. So when those people were just belly aching, spitting, yelling at people, and then just being offensive assholes. You were just being an asshole. I don't care what you were doing. You were just being an asshole. And that is what the main character is. They don't get any kind of defining arc. What the fuck? Also, it's just not a very good found footage movie. I know they're not really that good in general, but this one in particular. Is what she. Some of these on this list aren't just on here because they're bad. It's also because they're disappointing. Some of them I had some hope for. Some of them I had some curiosity for. One I was very particularly interested in, in watching, except it was not what I expected. Let's actually just start with that one. One of the worst movies of the year to me was Bones and All. I know a ton of people love this movie. I know it got praised. I know it's a cool little idea, admittedly based off of a young adult novel. Young girl who is a cannibal, has to go on the run, meets another cannibal, and they go on a road trip, and they meet other cannibals. This had a Stephen King story written all over it. Yet, I think that the napkin size of the script was somehow dragged out over two and a half hours. Two hours and 10 minutes, but it's still far too long than it needs to be. There are lots of moments where it's hanging on pretty photos, almost veering into Terrence Malick territory, and I feel it's taking away the pacing. I really enjoyed the chemistry between the two leads. The acting was great. The story was subpar. Mark Rollins was fantastic as Sully, but that ending, that ending could go fuck itself. So dumb and so rushed. Absolutely no justification. Completely demitigates the character resolution that just happened. Was not at all happy. I was very disappointed with this film, so that's why it's on the list. Speaking of disappointment, there's a meme going on right now of uh, <laughs> Daniel Craig from The Glass Onion, just like, it's just so dumb. And he's got Thor Love and Thunder above him. And that is exactly what I thought this film was. Not to say that Taika Waititi, this might not have been expected, considering he had a very small amount of time to make this movie. He didn't have as much as he did before, but just the rumors and then when you saw the behind the sets, uh, scene set stuff, it clearly showed he didn't give a shit. Or that he's like, you know what? I'm gonna do what I want, whatever. They asked me to do something. And maybe this is his way of getting out of it. He then burned the bridge with, <laughs> with the Star Wars job because he went up to Natalie Portman and legitimately said, hey, you wanna be in a Star Wars movie? Having not realized she was in the prequels. Taika's just on this kind of self-destruction train and I don't know why, but oh well. Anyways, Thor and Love and Thunder lost all of the magic, the appeal, and even the story relevancy that the, f the previous Taika movie had. It has no point, it has no purpose, it completely, completely robs you of a good, Christian Bale performance. You have one of the best actors in the age right now, and you waste him. Absolutely waste him. This character got no development, and any development that he did have was so routine, so basic. He's a god killer, yet you only see him kill one god. His amount of time in the movie was dumb. And then the ending, too, with Thor just being able to give all these kids his power. It's like, all right, guys, that's... That's the worst MacGuffin I've seen in the Marvel movies. Considering the caliber we had been given before, I just feel that Thor needs to have a different arc again. Like this is unfortunate because Thor is one of my favorite characters in this. I've never liked him as a comic, but I've liked the development they did with him in the shows or sorry, in the movies, but it just didn't happen in this one. So that's why it's on one of the worst list. Speaking of 
franchise ideas. The Secrets of Dumbledore. Now this movie isn't in the worst list because it's bad purely. It's not great, but probably the dumbest part about it is how boring it is, despite the fact that they had Steve Cloves come in, the guy who adapted almost every single Harry Potter movie, except for Order of the Phoenix for some reason. I feel that this guy should have been hired from the beginning. JK got a fucking <laughs> a pass, a very good pass admittedly, with Fantastic Beasts. That was a pretty decent movie, despite the fact that this lady had no experience making a screenplay. And I feel that that magic, that luck ran out dry with the Crimes of Grindelwald and then this one. She's just like, uh, here's an idea. This movie's two hours long, but really the plot's maybe like 10 minutes long. It's better construction wise than the last movie was, but the last movie was such a convoluted mess. There's a lot of elements that were in that that could have been crossed over into this movie, but it also pretty much spelled an end for the Fantastic Beast series. Forgive me if I'm wrong, I don't think it's truly, truly dead yet, but it is basically on its last breath. They want to reboot the Harry Potter movies into a TV show more than anything else. Whole prequel thing, Fantastic Beasts, which it shouldn't have been. It should have just been Newt in the first movie and just continue on, but whatever. Yeah, they're dead. Speaking of things that should be dead and stay dead, <sighs> Jurassic World Dominion. Holy shit, talk about a awful movie. Just talk about a dumb movie. Talk about a bad movie. Talk about a bland movie. I don't know how Colin Trevorrow kept this gig. Universal were just like, you know what? The first one made a billion. Hey, the second one made a billion. Sure, dude, you do it. It's because it's dinosaurs, guys. People love dinosaurs. Somehow this one made a billion. God damn, Michael Crichton's rolling in his grave. This is so bad. The movie has this really terrible plot with Locust and the villain, the villain of the movie who's not Tim Cook. Is that Tim Cook? Is that the head of Apple? Whoever the head of Apple is, that he's the fucking villain in this movie and some of the acting is some of the worst I've ever seen in a ba major blockbuster like this. And then they did that fucking hanging carrot bullshit with the original cast. It got a lot of people to come back, but you did not use them. Very evident to see how you can use a uh, legacy cast, and that's Top Gun Maverick. Mind you, the only one who came back was Tom Cruise and Val Kimmer. Everyone else was kind of dead, or not in the movie. That's a good legacy sequel. This movie was not at all. This was probably one of the worst big movies I've ever seen in a long time coming. Lacking of any kind of originality. It feels like a studio did it. It doesn't have any heart, it doesn't have any pulse, it is a, an animate object. It is that lifeless. I can barely remember this film, despite the fact that I watched it within the recent months. You shouldn't forget a fucking Jurassic Park movie. I remember the last one more than this one. But it feels kind of like the Rise of Skywalker conclusion to this trilogy. They didn't know what to do with it. Just like, yeah, yeah, yeah. Then the final terrible last movie of the year is one that Mark, I feel, is going to be particularly happy about this one. Halloween Ends. This is the perfect example of why you shouldn't give stoners the budget for three movies in a story. All they can think of is the first bit and then they'll just make the bullshit up as they go along. I thought the last one was gonna be the worst one. This is worse. Halloween Ends was awful, except for the John Carpenter soundtrack. That was good. Everything else was awful. You have a film within a film that should not be in this film. Had that part been separate from the movie, that might have not been bad. But when you have a Halloween movie and Jamie Lee Curtis and Michael Myers are pushed literally to the sides, they've got maybe 15 to 20 minutes and you don't even explain how he survived. You went that demon fucking supernatural route and then you just kind of eh. Except for apparently when <laughs> Michael kills someone, he basically gets life, life Viagra. Oh. This guy, the director at least, is going to be directing the fucking Exorcist remake? Oh, oh, people, we're fucked. Disappointments. Disappointments to come. But that's it, guys. Those are my worst movies of 2023. I hope you enjoyed your time with the films this year. There were some other ones that could have made this list, like Doctor Strange 2 got really close to it. Uh, Morbius, I, everyone said Morbius, but Morbius was so fucking boring. 
and just like not even worth talking about it. It was a, it was a lot of shitty movies this year. I really hope that we get a better year. Dune 2 comes out next year. Anyways, guys, those are my thoughts. I have rambled on long enough. Give me your worst movies of the year. It doesn't have to be listed. You don't have to make it like, what was your worst one? I just said three, or what's it, a couple, a couple that were really, really bad. I really hope that I'm able to edit this because I have been rambling for a bit. Oh, thank you for watching this year. Thank you for tuning in, watching whatever I come up with. I know I was very absent this year and I apologize for that. It was just, that was how the year went. That was how it went. I do want to see if I can be more attuned to this this year, or 2023. I would like to do more because it's been, it's kind of fallen off into the wayside and I miss it. I miss talking with you guys. I miss making videos. I don't want to commit to anything because I have said I would do things in the past and I did not even get close to them. So I'll say I am going to try. I will not promise anything, but I am going to try next year. I feel bad. So, and I've got this itch, this want to go, this aspiration that I haven't had in a while, but this might be gone by tomorrow, but We'll see. That's ADHD for you. Anyways, guys, that's all for me. Thank you for this year. And I look forward to talking to you guys in 2023.